so folks, this is the worst Saturday for Donald Trump in an extremely long time. And that's for two key reasons. So hit the like and subscribe button as we follow the worst weekend in Donald Trump's life. And he deserves every bit of it. And it's connected not only to his own personal legal troubles, but also the fate, the coup attempt against his BFF, his bestest buddy, his bro, Vladdy Putin, all the way in Russia. And why this matters is that Donald Trump always sees Russia as an insurance card, somewhere that he could flee, that he could go in the worst case scenario to escape justice where they wouldn't extradite him. But with a coup happening, God knows what's going to go down in Russia. No one's a good guy there, but the uh, instability is devastating for Trump. And this comes at a time where Jack Smith today had an emergency press release, press conference, where he put out brand new information. Last night, Jack made a move that people weren't sure about what the effects were going to be. And I said we should be cautious when we analyze it. Today, Jack made it clear and everyone agrees that it was a brilliant maneuver and he has scared Donald Trump even more than before. And Trump doesn't even have Russia to flee to. We got a lot of news tonight. Just hours ago, special counsel Jack Smith filed new motions in the classified documents case against Donald Trump. Smith is asking the judge to move the start date of the trial from August back to December and to sign off on a list of people that Trump cannot discuss the case with. Smith also wants a pretrial conference to discuss the use of Classified Information Procedure Act, which has to do with precautions around sensitive documents in trials. Joining me now to discuss the man himself, Andrew Weissman, former FBI general counsel and former senior member of the Mueller probe. I am so glad you're here. What? This whole thing was like Jack Smith wants to move this thing along. August, this thing's going to be rocking and rolling. Now he's the one moving it to December. I cannot imagine why, but I am just a, a lay person. Explain this. I will, because it is. it would be completely wrong to interpret this as Jack Smith not wanting a fast trial. So when Which, of course, the judge- uh, we're interpreting incorrectly. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So when the judge um, set this sort of August date, this was sort of a pro forma uh, placeholder. Nobody, not nobody, thought that this was the trial date that was going to stick. Um, it, it's just, it's literally impossible to have all of the discovery and do all the motions by that time. And this is her standard practice of issuing this initial order, and then it gets pushed out based on various things that could come up in a case. So. The parties knew that. And if you remember, a lot of people talked about that. Don't be fooled by that date. Um, Jack Smith, at his one and only press conference, said he will be asking for a speedy trial. And so I interpret this and substance of the motion as his laying down a marker saying that we, the, we want a real and firm trial date of December. And he lays out in his papers exactly what he thinks the timeline can be, when motions can be made, when discovery is going to all be completed, um, to try and tell the judge this is why that is a realistic date. And December would be a very fast date. Um, you know, I think that he set forth an aggressive timeline, but one that is doable, especially since he's turned over so much discovery already. Um, so, again, do not take this as Jack Smith in some way is afraid of a fast trial date. If you notice, the defense is saying they don't want that date. Of course, the defense is going to be saying they want a date, you know, <laughs> in the next millennium. Um, so, again, this is, I think, a sort of standard motion in front of this judge to say, please give us a real date and, and one that I think is is a very tight time frame, which is, you know, what I, would, what I expected when Jack said he was going to you know, he was going to seek this very fast date. Glenn, explain this move to us. Is a move to delay cause for concern about the case? No, Jonathan, I think it's thoroughly unsurprising. I don't know that all legal analysts agree to everything all the time. But I think when we all saw Judge Aileen Cannon set the trial date for August 14th, our immediate reaction was, yeah, that trial date is not going to hold. Now, we understand why she did it. The Speedy Trial Act provides that somebody is to be taken to trial within 70 days of their arraignment. So Judge Cannon, I think, appropriately set a trial date for about 63 days from the time Donald Trump was arraigned. 
But it was entirely unrealistic, particularly in a case that involves classified information like this, because the defense attorneys have to apply for and be granted security clearances. And the, the prosecutors and the Department of Justice had said, we will speed it up. We will move at light speed. But they also note that some of the defense attorneys haven't even filed the preliminary paperwork, the SF-86 National Security Questionnaire, to even get the security clearance ball rolling. I don't think that was a, a slap at the defense team. I just think the, the prosecutors were highlighting for the judge that, look, um, there is going to be more run up time to this trial because of the nature of the evidence, these highly classified documents than is otherwise, you know, ordinarily the case in trial. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think this is all that remarkable. I think we were all expecting it. Mm -hmm. And Brad, here's what Andrew Weissman tweeted about this motion. Quote, the government SEPA motion is standard other than uh, other than it is taking out the big crayons to teach the district judge about the basics of SEPA, which she will need to master in order to handle the classified discovery issues. Is this delay as much for Cannon's benefit as anyone else's? Yeah, no, Andrew is right. And Glenn kind of hit on it in the idea that none of us believe this trial was going to happen in August. That just wasn't plausible. But yes, this is what the government almost always does in every case that involves SEPA, the Classified Information Procedures Act, and particularly in one like with Judge Cannon, who hasn't had the experience, not just in her own you know, uh, professional life before being a judge, but particularly as a judge. She hasn't presided over one of these before. She hasn't dealt with the different uh, notifications that both the government and quite possibly Mr. Trump's team will have to make about any classified evidence that has to be introduced at trial that they intend to provide. There's going to be a fight almost certainly between the parties in what's called a Section 6 hearing before Judge Cannon in terms of what type of classified testimony and classified documentation is going to be produced at trial, how it's going to be produced at trial, whether it be redactions, whether it be substitutions or stipulations. Those are all kinds of fights that have to happen before before we ever get close to trial, and that's going to easily take weeks before we even get to these guys having clearances, which they haven't even gotten to yet. Wow. So, hey, hey, Glenn, much like the evidence they released on Wednesday, is this a power move from Smith and his team, a way to show Trump and the judge that they ain't messing around? You know, I don't think it's a power move as much as it is a necessity in, you know, SEPA trials. Um, what I did think was really interesting, Jonathan, was that discovery letter that Jack Smith sent saying, listen, we're not even required to give you all of the witness statements or all of the grand jury transcripts. Ordinarily, prosecutors only give over the grand jury transcripts for the witnesses they intend to call a trial. But boy, Jack Smith went above and beyond and said, we're going to give you all the grand jury transcripts. So what does that mean? That means Donald Trump now knows all of the witnesses who went into the grand jury and what they testified to about his crimes, which is probably why he erupted in that post and expressly urged Congress to, quote, stop this now, which feels a little obstruction of justice ish to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Let me get you on one more thing. So do you think that to speak of power moves, Glenn, uh, and this is a question I asked Harry Littman last night. Do you think that this is Jack Smith's attempt by giving him all of this stuff? Hey, dude, here's the case against you. You might as well just come on. Think about settling. Let, let's make a deal. You know, I think it could have that effect for any other litigant other than Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not big on taking responsibility for his own misdeeds. Um, I, I think the other thing Jack Smith was doing, though, was not only being fully transparent, providing more discovery, more evidence than the rules actually require him to provide. But, you know, we have seen prosecutions break bad in the past. For instance, the Senator Ted Stevens case, where the prosecutors won a conviction, but they lost the appeal because it mm -hmm. turns out they didn't give over all of the evidence that could have been helpful to the defendant that might wow. have been Brady evidence. I don't think Jack Smith wants to run the risk of any of those problems. And he is going to play this straight up and then some. So you can see, you can see there right now, this is bad for Donald Trump. 
right? A lot of us thought, well, why is Jack delaying it? Why is this happening? Well, it's for largely technical reasons, and those technical reasons seem to be reasonable as we've gone through and looked at the, de the, de the details, the data, what have you, that it's likely going to have some sort of delay anyway because of the very complex nature, not just of the fact that it's a loser ex-president on trial, but that, you know, it deals with, you know, government documents and thousands of them, and some of them are classified highly so. So how do you, you know, bring evidence into a trial while ensuring everything stays classified if it needs to remain classified? I'm sure some of the documents could be declassified, but most of them probably cannot. And all of that's going to take time. But it's also rather astute by Jack to make this move now, because by doing so, you sort of trap Trump. If you don't push for a delay and he does, he could have won a major delay well into 2024. But by you as the prosecution being reasonable and saying, look, August is too fast, but we got to get this done this year. Let's start in December. Then it sort of traps Trump. Yeah, it doesn't start as soon as we would like, which is we want justice now, but it starts much sooner than we thought originally and much sooner than Donald Trump and his team would argue. And it's going to be very hard for them to go and ask for more than what Jack is asking because Jack already looks reasonably so like he's compromising. It's devastating for Trump devastating and Jack making that rationale clear today sort of updating us all and that's why the experts are even more confident is critical but why this also matters is Trump's got nowhere to go I said this before Trump's insurance is to take his little piddly private jet and fly it to Russia you have to stop somewhere to fuel it up but fly his private jet remember they didn't take his passport they didn't fly his little piddly private jet and land it in Moscow and become roommates with Vladimir Putin. And with a coup attempt currently ongoing against Putin, Donald Trump's insurance policy is gone. He is screwed multiple ways.